Disaster recovery at the large scale. Okay, planning and implementation. Okay, so we have our three servers that the user is interested in protecting, or potentially many of them. And because these are two geographically separate sites, we have the wide area network in the middle. Okay, the problem we talked about before when setting up this site-to-site -site disaster recovery protection, we end up in the situation where all of the data that each one of these machines has must be migrated across the wire at least once so that on the target host we can create our backups. Okay, once the initial copy is made, the incremental copies are much smaller. And what the user wants is to not spend a large amount of time sending these initial data copies over. They want a method to be able to shortcut or to make, implement the disaster recovery plan faster by getting these machines built up on the target side with all the initial data and then starting off with the ongoing syncs. We call this server sync technology within our product. And the way that it's implemented is you discover some other server in your environment, okay, here on the production side. Once this server has been discovered by Placement Protect, you can right click on it in the user interface and install an image server. When you install an image server on a machine, in effect, you turn that machine into a placement image server. And the, image, the disk for that machine can be leveraged as storage space for images of each one of these machines. So what's happening here is we're creating a mechanism by which placement protect, okay, you'll discover all the servers that the user wants to copy. You'll run local image migration captures of each one of these machines. Okay, so now we have all of the data from each one of those servers stored in file format on our image server. Okay, so this is the workload or is an image capture of the workload from these three servers. Now, what we need to do is we need to get this initial image, this workload captured data, we need to get that to the target site. So it doesn't really matter how you get it across. You can trickle it across the WAN if you want to, if you have lots of time on your side. You can take the images, put them in a truck, drive it over to the target site. Okay, so now we've gotten past our problem of the fact that there's a WAN in the way by sending the data another means to the destination data center. From here, it's basically doing the same process in reverse. We set up the plate spin image server. Okay, for all the images that are on the plate spin image server. I'll just denote the fact that this is an image server. Okay, we point plate spin protect at the image server. Now from here, it's just a matter of simply running a migration and deploying the data. Okay, this may look really complicated, but all that's really happened here is we have a production site with some servers on it that we want to capture and protect. We set up an image server by discovering a machine, just like we've done with these three servers, right-clicking and saying install image server. Once we've done that, we've run local migrations, so the data doesn't have to go across the WAN. The data is copied locally to your image server data repository. From that point, We've gotten that image data by any means we see necessary. I've drawn a truck here. We've trucked that over to the target site. At this point, we can now take our Platespin Protect server, point it at this target data, and deploy these images just like as if they were running virtual machines. Now basically what's happened is we've gotten all the regular images or all the data that these three servers have comprised of um, over to the target site and deployed, and now they're running as virtual machines.